Hey everyone, Jason Shepard here with RemotePilot101.com and I wanted to give you a sneak peek inside our ground school for that FAA Part 107 knowledge test. This lesson happens to be on scheduled and unscheduled maintenance as it relates to a small UAS and what the manufacturer really recommends. So let's go ahead and play that clip from right inside our ground school. What does the FAA have to say in Part 107 in regards to unmanned aircraft and their maintenance schedule? Well, really, it's just that, the word scheduled. There's two types of maintenance. There's scheduled maintenance and there is unscheduled maintenance. Now, maintenance for small UAS includes scheduled and unscheduled overhaul, repair, inspection, modification, replacement, and system software upgrades for the unmanned aircraft itself and all components necessary for flight. We learned about this in the previous video on required pre-flight action, that if the manufacturer comes out with a firmware update and I'm not up to date, I'm not legal for that commercial operation. My aircraft at that time is unairworthy because I've fallen out of airworthiness because my lack of updating that firmware, my lack of following that scheduled maintenance protocol. And let's talk about that. Let's talk about what does the manufacturer actually recommend. Now, manufacturers may recommend a maintenance or replacement schedule for unmanned aircraft and system components. Listen to this part. Based on time in service limits and other factors. It goes back again to a few videos ago where I stress the importance of logging flight time and logging maintenance time. How else am I going to know time in service limits unless I'm actually logging and writing down that time? Now, I know some of these UAS manufacturers have a, you know, what we'd call a Hobbs meter or a time and service meter on it itself. But still, we need to be logging that time, putting it to paper, or putting it in some sort of electronic logbook. It can be an Excel spreadsheet. It doesn't matter. We need to be logging flight time. We need to be logging maintenance time as well. When dealing with the FAA, if there forbid were to be an accident, it's all about covering ourselves and making sure we did everything to a T, being able to prove that that was all done. Keep a paperwork trail. Let's keep reading here together. Follow all manufacturer maintenance recommendations to achieve the longest and safest service life of the small UAS. If the small UAS or component manufacturer does not provide scheduled maintenance instructions, it is recommended that you establish your own scheduled maintenance protocol. It will talk about this more in our pre-flight video coming up, but let's continue with that manufacturer's recommendation type theme. On your screen it says, in some instances, the small UAS or component manufacturer may require certain maintenance tasks be performed by the manufacturer or by a person or facility personnel specified by the manufacturer. So there may be some scheduled and required maintenance that requires you to box it up and ship it back to the manufacturer wherever they may be to get that part fixed or overhauled or refurbished, whatever it may be. But those bulletins are going to come into effect and those bulletins are going to affect the airworthiness ultimately of that aircraft specifically for your commercial operations. So when it talks about on your knowledge test about manufacturers recommendations, we're obviously to follow those to a T. Now, if they don't offer it, we are to make really our own maintenance protocol. Look at the very top of your screen in that blue box. It says, during the course of a pre-flight inspection, you may discover that the small UAS component uh, requires some form of maintenance outside of its scheduled maintenance period. It could be a prop, it could be a landing gear, it could be whatever it is that needs that required maintenance, and then you need to go and document it. We are to document any repair, modification, overhaul, or replacement of a system component resulting from normal flight operations. This is normal wear and tear. This isn't from resulting from a crash, from an accident, something like that. This is just normal wear and tear is what it's talking about. Second bullet point says, record the time and service for that component at the time of the maintenance procedure. 
Guys, scouts, everything I'm reading to you, these three bullet points, are all going to be on your Part 107 knowledge test. So I hope you've taken a screenshot of this, you're writing this down, you understand what it's asking, because these are all answers on the knowledge test. Third bullet point says this, assess these records over time to establish a reliable maintenance schedule for the small UAS and its components. So it's saying to start out and fix things as need be but keep a log as you fix it. Then when you get six months, 12 months worth of data, go back over that data and let's look for the trends. Hey, you know, geez, it seems like every month I'm putting new props on this thing. I'm just gonna make part of my protocol that every 30 days, I'm just gonna replace the props, whatever it may be. Hey, every six months, I'm gonna get rid of these batteries and I'm gonna just put new batteries in so I don't have to worry about an airborne fire or anything like that and you establish your own maintenance protocol, then you, that's something you can put in writing and keep it with you when you're flying. So again, forbid there were an accident, you can say, this is how I log time, this is how I log my maintenance, here is my maintenance protocol I follow because my manufacturer hasn't specified one. Or even better, here's my manufacturer's specified maintenance protocol, and here's how I go above and beyond what they say. You know, I, I get the gold star in maintenance because I go above and beyond what this particular manufacturer has to say. They say change the props every six months, I'm changing them every three months, whatever it may be. Maintenance is so crucial. And I promise you, now dealing with the FAA and there's going to be accidents, you're going to want to have that paperwork trail to back you up. And again, looking at this slide, those three bullet points right there are three answers to three knowledge test questions. Make sure you fully understand that and I'll see you guys in the next lesson. See ya. I hope you guys really enjoyed that. To see the entire thing, to see the entire ground school, go to remotepilot101.com to get signed up. It's one flat fee. The course is yours for life. If you enjoyed this video, you're gonna enjoy the dozens of other videos to help you pass that part 107 FAA knowledge test with flying colors. Visit remotepilot101.com and I'll see you guys inside the course. See ya.